All right, so this week I've got a lot of work to do. One of the things I'm gonna focus on is my cowling. I've got it done, I need to split it. So I'm gonna just do a simple overlap and screws so I can kind of keep that rivet and outdoor backcountry look going. I've gotta get that done. Most importantly, I gotta build the inside pressurized plumbing system and filter box and alternate air for the turbine. So real quickly, if this is the front of my cowling and I have an inch scoop right here and the air feeds this way, this would be the prop area. Um, I'm gonna do something very different. I've seen a lot of systems out there. They have a lot of parts, a lot of pieces. Uh, I think I can do something a little better. It's gonna take a lot of work with carbon fiber. So this would probably be the most complicated lower cowling I've ever done in my life. So I'm gonna try and, and build a pressure box down here, slow the air down and build a total, uh, an air box that holds my filters inside the lower cowling itself. Normally they're located independently, have maybe two filters in it and they do lots of metal ducting out it on the motor mount frame and then they got it ducted into the turbine. It's over a hundred something parts. I'm gonna try and do it four to five parts total by using the existing cowling shape and building a box into that cowling so that I eliminate all that ducting and parts also, most importantly, the air coming in the front at 130 calibrated is moving really fast. If I get the air to slow down as it goes through the filter, which doesn't happen in a little tiny box with little ducts going to it, the air has to be moving really fast, which is not efficient. We want to slow it down as it goes through the filter. So I'm going to uh, build a separation wall, a sealed box, and I'm going to see if I can get four, maybe five filters pointed forward at this lower part. And then there'll be a secondary zone box that has two parts that go up and dump air directly into the turbine in just a couple of parts. This doesn't make sense now. I'm going to go try and build it. But the other thing I'm going to do is in doing it this way, I'm going to put a hinge back here on the back and I'm going to put a door that swings off the back of this pressurized box. This will be on a worm drive, a simple flip of the switch. It'll be alternate air. This door can open up. And my cowling hangs about five inches below the actual airframe of the engine. Here's my windscreen here. And I've got this gap. It's an inertial separator. So the way it'll work is if I'm in heavy ice and I'm worried about clogging up my filters, which I won't be in heavy ice, it's a bush plane, but uh, that air is moving this way. Those ice particles or dirt or whatever there is cannot make this, set, this 90 degree U-turn. They'll blow right by, but the air can get drawn in. So if I want, I can flip a switch, open up the back of this box, the air can run in this direction and go into the engine. So I know it's a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna try and build this and a battery this week, a few other things, do a little sanding, prep work for paint, but I got a lot of work to do, so let's get at it. All right, so right here, I've got to build a NACA. This will be the intake for my oil cooler. My oil cooler sits right up in here. Drew a template down on a table and then I bent this to match that. And now I can use this to give me my correct NACA shape and transfer it onto the rounded surface. So the way I'm gonna build this NACA, I've done it before and it's so easy, is I'm not gonna cut this section right here. I'm gonna cut down this side and this side, and then I'll take this existing carbon fiber. It's already got the rounded shape I want. And I'm gonna push it in to this cut out, leaving this here. I can slide this in and put it however far I want it, which on this NACA, I'm gonna be about two and a quarter to two and a half inches back. Now, I'm also gonna put a directional fin that stands upright, it comes out beyond about a half inch and then blends back forward. All right, I just cut that out. I push this back and I just put in this little fence. This is going to be my new oil access door. I'm just going to do a simple push to release, hinge forward. I feel like I'm getting close. All right, I'm going to make the smallest carbon fiber part so far. This is uh, two pieces of single ply honeycomb fiberglass. And I just kind of made a little mini airfoil. I need to make a support steel inside my intake duct to my filter system. Just making that carbon fiber burrito here. What you do, anytime you're making tube or bar or anything else, you want to hold it and pull back against it 
and we'll get it really tight. Now peel ply, then we can bag it. Layer, wrap, bonded. This total time was under 30 minutes. We wrapped it, threw it in the oven. It took about eight minutes, pulled it out, quick sanded it. I'm gonna install it. So under 30 minutes, I know it's a tiny part, but that's how we get done. So we're getting closer. I've got two sealed chambers here. These are for air filters. I've got a little support rib here. I've made this really solid. This is the intake air comes in through the bottom here, through the intake. This will have a lid that closes this out. This is where I'll have five large filters between here and here. When I close this lid, the air will come out two ducts right here and right here. This foam is not for the mold. It's just spacing to make sure I don't hit anything on the engine. So I've just cut these up real quick. If this clears, then we'll make a mold that fits this permanently and then a lid that closes it out. And if not, we'll just trim it back till it's close and we'll base a mold off of it. So this is the uh, kind of redneck version of how we know what we want to build next. So back to work. All right, so this is the start of the mold. Foam board, pink blocks. And this is the first part I'm getting ready to cut to make a mold. I trace the sideline of the aircraft right there, put a better bleed in airflow on it. I'll put a cap and an adjoining to put my air duct into the engine. So I'll make four of these and I'll start shaping a mold and then we'll pull a part off it. I needed a, uh, a thick sheet of carbon fiber to make the filter box for the intake on the wheel. All right, so I just made this, if you look inside here. This is a Ram air pressure box I've made. All these tubes is where I go have five filters go on. This will close out this box and it'll have a rubber seal and it will screw down and this will be an airtight pressure box. So the air comes in from up in the front, way up there through the pressure intake. This will close off and comes through the filters, through this sealed box, up these sides and into the top of the engine. So I just made a foam template. We made this carbon fiber sheet last night. It's 10 layers thick. Transfer this pattern onto there and we'll cut it out. Okay, right here I'm just drilling all the holes to install all the Clayco's and then nut plates and that will be a sealed airtight filter box. So I finally get to cut the cowling in half. All the internals done, the filter box, the air chambers, the bifurcated duct splitting up to the upper part of the first um, stage of the compressor. So I gotta cut this. What I left is these little marks. I'm gonna cut six inch notches between here and I'm gonna leave a little tick. The reason for that is uh, the cowling will still be connected even though it's 98% trimmed. And then on the back side, I'll be able to see the cut line and I'll put a foil tape above the cut line and below it, I'll clean it and prep it. And then I'll put a big six inch piece of carbon fibers. You can see here where I've cut the lines and left these little ticks all the way down. What's nice about that is now I can use my foil tape. I'm gonna put the tape right in the line and up about that high. And then I'm gonna lay my six layer carbon fiber right there. And then I'll bag it, vacuum it, you know, fill ply, release. And then when I pull it off, I just cut those ticks and I can break it free. And the carbon fiber will stay on this lower section with a lip coming up for the top cowling to hook to. <clears throat> I used to put a plate on and I'd bond it on. But if you actually make this part part of the mold before you separate the two, the outside edge that's got the bodywork stays perfect because any little imperfection in this cowling or the arc or the radius here will be into that overlap, will actually have the perfect radius to it. So um, you could normally use duct tape for release. On this, duct tape's way too thick. And if you put it on and then peeled the tape off and, and screwed the two parts together, they would offset the thickness of the duct tape. So you wanna use a really thin foil tape to do this upper section. So I'm gonna clean it, prep it, and we'll get back to work.